G'day fellas and welcome to what is the most anticipated civilization to join Age of Empires 4. It is of course the Japanese. This video is going to be in two parts. The first part is just going to be going through the information the devs have given me. The second part is going to be about these pictures that you see rotating through the background. We'll be breaking them down and taking a look at what we can spot out for them. So let's get into it. The Japanese civilization introduces the new daimyo system, allowing you to upgrade the town center to a daimyo manor, and eventually a shogunate castle that comes with powerful defenses while also bolstering food production from nearby farms. Advancing the daimyo level also unlocks access to samurai bannerman, special units that provide significant combat bonuses to units around them. Embrace espionage by fielding the unique shinobi capable of blending in with enemy villages and sabotaging production from behind enemy lines. So there you go. There's three unique aspects that we've just discovered for the Japanese. First and foremost, the daimyo system. Second of all, the bannerman system. And third and foremost, the shinobi, which is going to be an absolute... Uh, I can tell you right now, there's going to be so many Reddit threads about this unit. It is just... It's... People are going to hate it. <laughs> when I say people are going to hate it, it's the people that are playing against the Japanese that are going to hate it. It is, it's not fun. It is not fun. <laughs> it is torture. All right, let's get into it. Playing the Japanese. So the Japanese Civ begin age one with multi-purpose buildings that offer unique options for early strategy. They're also excellent at producing fishing boats quickly. So you focus on your localized economy, supported by the daimyo from the town centers. And once upgraded to the daimyo manor, your villagers are, are working on farms significantly faster in the surrounding area. You have a vast roster of infantry, mainly focused around the samurai. You can defend your territory, you can lead into battle with your samurai. The, the bannermen support infantry in particular. They, they support infantry and cavalry with attack bonuses, and the samurai offer excellent frontline support because they've got a unique, I don't know if I'd call it ability, but unique mechanic called deflective armor. And it allows them to block attacks periodically. Uh, so it, it's one of those things where it's... Uh, the whole attack is just gone. It's... Uh, yeah, it's curious. Uh, we'll, we'll move on though. Japanese units. Let's talk a little bit about them. So of course, we've talked about the Shinobi. It's available from a landmark called the Koka Township. It's a light melee unit. So the same class as a Spearman. It has the ability to disguise itself as an enemy villager. It also has a, an ability to sabotage enemy structures. And it can also use smoke bombs to reappear in a new location. Keep in mind, this unit also has an attack. So it is, it's, there's a lot going on for it. I'll say that much. That's the first unique unit that we're going to be talking about. The second one, it's going to be the Honor Musha, which is a unique crossbow replacement. It is a horse archer. However, it does extra damage against heavy, heavy units. Uh, it's got a longer range than a crossbow. It's also obviously on a horse, so it's got more mobility. Uh, and it is just an absolute beast. I'm kind of scared that we're just going to see a lot of these units spammed out. Uh, the last unit that we're going to be talking about is the Ozutsu, uh, which is a unique gunpowder unit. So kind of think about like a hand cannon here, except it's got AoE and it's really good at killing buildings. And this unit is also available from a landmark specifically. If you don't take the landmark, you don't get access to the unit. And it's called the Tanagashima Gunsmith. So let's go through the Japanese. Let's talk about each of their ages, what you're going to have access to as you go through each age playing as the Japanese. So from age one, you benefit from buildings that have dual purposes. The farmhouse, the forge. The farmhouse acts as a mill and a house. It can be constructed near berry bushes so that if you've got a deficit in sheep, you can just easily transition out over onto your berries. You don't even have to think about dropping down a mill because you've already put a house out there. The forge, on the other hand, it's a mining camp and a blacksmith. So it means that you can start getting those upgrades immediately upon hitting Feudal Age, or if you're playing the Japanese, which you are, because you've got access to that unique forge, you can actually get a Dark Age melee damage technology. It's unique. So they've actually got four tiers of uh, melee damage technologies, which is kind of wild when you think about it, because if you've got a unit that does six damage, getting an extra one damage that's a lot. That's a lot of damage. So it's uh, it's it's an impressive upgrade. We'll say that much. So once you've aged up, you've got two options, I guess we should say, before you age up. You've got two options. The first one is the Coca Township, which we've talked about. You, you gain access to the Shinobi, and that is, that's unique to that landmark. If you don't go for that, if you instead go for the Kura Storehouse, it's more of an economic option. So the Kura Storehouse is interesting because it acts as a universal drop-off location. We've seen that before with things like the Arkham Chapel. 
but instead of providing a bonus around it, what it does is it periodically generates farms for free in the surrounding area. So you'll see in the screenshots behind there is uh, the, the Kura, um, the Kura storehouse is there and it's got a ring of farms around it. So there's a fair bit of wood that you're going to be getting for free here from this landmark. It is really cool and I, I love it. I, I think it's such a cool landmark, such a great design as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about Age 3. So in Age 3, once again, access to two different landmarks. One of them's got a really good name. You guys are going to like this a lot. So we've got the Floating Gate to unlock the Shinto Priests. That's not the good name. This is the good name. Or if you want to unlock Buddhist monks, you can go for the Temple of Quality. That is correct. <laughs> the Temple of Quality. That, that's where I hail from, if you're wondering. Uh, so Shinto priests are able to place sacred objects called Yorishiro in buildings. Yorish, Yorish, Yorishiro? I think that's pronounced. Yorishiro in buildings to achieve special bonuses. Whereas Buddhist monks, they can weaken enemy damage output and solidify your position on the field. So two different approaches there. You've got the floating gate, which is a little bit more about buffing up your own buildings and your own base. Whereas the temple of quality, which is about, you know, training those Buddhist monks, getting them out onto the field. And I guess you'd, you'd almost say like fearing them or weakening that weakening that damage, the output that they do. So it's kind of like the camel in a way, except it, it affects all units. Into age four though, the Japanese can choose between boosting trade or cultivating gunpowder weaponry. The castle of the crow acts as a keep and generates treasure caravans, which can traverse land or water to trade at any trade post. Whereas the Ta Tanegashima gunsmith can access an arsenal of gunpowder units, including the Ozutsu heavy ranged infantry. So we've already talked about the Ozutsu. It's the unit that is unique to this landmark. If you don't take this landmark, you don't get access to the Ozutsu. But that's not the only unit that can be built here. It does specifically say that there is an arsenal of gunpowder units available at this landmark. Now, when it comes to the Castle of the Crow, it's important to note that it generates treasure caravans. That's not normal caravans, that's treasure caravans. It's different. I can't go into too many details because I've got an NDA, but I can tell you it's uh, it's not as simple as it seems. We'll say that much. All right, well, we've talked about the units. We've talked about the Japanese through the ages. We've talked about playing the Japanese. I'll just give you a little bit of the lore to explain about where the inspiration for the Japanese comes from, just so you're not confused. The Japanese civilization spans the late 8th century to the early 17th century. The collapse of imperial power separated the Japanese into smaller kingdoms ruled by warlords to ultimately be reunified by a bloody civil war. During this period, the daimyo employed the samurai to defend their territories by paying them with goods such as land and food. I think there's, a, there's actually a, re a really good video that you could watch about this. Uh, what's his name? Just Google like history of Japan, I think it is. Or, or history of the world, it's, it's the same guy. Does amazing videos. Oh my God, they're, they're hilarious. But something, I, I just remember hearing something about like the daimyo employing the samurais to defend their territories and paying them with goods such as land and food. And they paid them so much that the samurais became so powerful that they became a threat to the daimyos. And so now you've got like samurais battling it out. And, <laughs> and essentially it was just like, there, there were just so many little areas and kingdoms that were being fought it, it didn't sound like fun Un unless you were a samurai then it was probably fun anyway let's move on to the second part of the video let's break down each of these screenshots and try and identify exactly what we've got going on here all right well welcome to the second part of the video we start by taking a look here at the japanese flag quite unique nothing like it at all definitely one of the better looking flags i do like this one a lot and of course we then move into the key art for the japanese very wild scene that we've got going on here a lot going on in the background and of course in in the foreground here i don't know who our heroine is but uh she looks quite fierce and then onto the next screenshot we have got the unique building for the japanese this is of course the forge the mining camp which kind of looks like a house um hold on is this is it just a house it just looks like a house <laughs> i don't think it is uh, but it does, it looks like a house. Uh, but I, if I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the forge, uh, which is the mining camp plus blacksmith. It does look a little bit bigger than a house. I will say that much. It looks like it's three by three, which is the correct blueprint size. We can see behind it, we've got the, the town center and we've got a couple of units. Now keep in mind, this is the dark age. Um, and one of the things to note is we've got the farmhouses that are out here, which have got each of the, the farms nearby. They do that for the aesthetics, but we've also got uh, spearmen. And then we've got, take a look at that. What do we got right here? That is, uh, I, I don't think, 
we can discuss that unit if I remember correctly. Well, I mean, they, they haven't, if, if they haven't mentioned it, I can't discuss it. I'll say that much. I, I've been told very specifically. We may only discuss what is here. Uh, but obviously you guys know that I've had my hands on them. I, I know how they play. Uh, I can say right now, they're very aggressive. They're very aggressive. Now let's get into the next screenshot. So this is going to be the Kura Storehouse, or at least if I remember correctly, let me double check that I'm telling you guys the right name here. Uh, yeah, this is the Kura Storehouse. So uh, it, it will be generating free farms for you. So you can see that it's quite a bit here going up to, is it 12? I think, yeah, three on each side. So four sides, that's 12. Uh, so a decent amount of, of farms there. Uh, 900 wood, that, that's nothing to sniff at right there. Uh, and they slowly come over time. So it's a pretty powerful landmark when you think about it, right? Sets you up for that farm transition. Keep in mind this, this uh, synergizes really well with the town center because obviously with the town center, you upgrade it into the, uh, the Daimyo Manor. And so that's going to give you uh, additional bonuses to your farms or your villages that are on farms. So you get a really nice synergy there if you're thinking about playing that economic style. Uh, but other than that, it looks like, what do we got up here? Looks, I think we've got a trader. We've got a couple of spearmen running past. A uh, couple of dudes holding these weapons. And it looks like a couple of horsemen, or at least... Yeah, what's going on with this guy? Why did you draw the short straw? Quite literally. Look at this guy. This this is the guy she tells you not to worry about, and this is you. This is... Uh, well, it's dangerous to be around this guy. I'll say that much. Uh, let's move on to the next screenshot, though, and uh, and take a look at, at what we've got. So here we've got uh, the, the new landmark. This is the Coca Township. Uh, and in front of it, of course, it is the Shinobi. These guys looking very cool. Very, uh, well, nothing sus, right? Until all of a sudden, BAM! And then all of a sudden your buildings are sabotaged. Uh, we also see what appear to be some banner units over here, or I should say banner unit. Uh, and then behind it, well, it's hard to make out exactly what's going on here. A couple more spearmen over towards the left side of the image. We'll move on to the next screenshot. And this is going to be your age three landmark, the floating gate. And in front of it, you can see the Shinto priest who stands right here. Now, keep in mind, this is the landmark uh, that allows you to place the Yoroshiro in buildings. Um, so you get special bonuses when you place the Yoroshiro in the buildings. Um, so kind of, I guess the best way to visualize it for, for now would be like, ima imagine picking up a relic and then putting it in a building. It's kind of like that. Uh, that. That would probably be the best way to do it uh, or best way to explain it. Uh, but other than that, what else do we see here? We've got uh, a, a couple more of these units that we I can't talk about. Uh, and then, <laughs> then we've got spearmen. Then we've got some cavalry up here. We've got a Springled as well. And yeah, just a, a nice looking Japanese base to start you off. And now we can see this is the, the unique horse archer that the, the Japanese have got access to. So this is such a cool unit. I like it uh, a lot. I think it's going to be quite powerful. It's the horse archer that doubles, as a, or not doubles, but it, it's a crossbowman with four legs. That's the best way to think about it. So it is, uh, it's, it's quite a strong unit. And the, the name of this unit is the Onamusha. So... I don't know if I'm going to be screaming that out, you know, in, in the Red Bull Walla Lull and the Onamushas come through. And yeah, maybe it's, it's pretty easy. It kind of rolls off the tongue. I guess once you've said it a hundred times, it's, it's pretty easy to, to remember. All right. And then we move on to the age four landmark right here. This is the Taganashima gunsmith, as you would expect with all of this siege sitting outside. And it's interesting to note what's sitting outside here. So we've got Randy out the front. We've got some hand cannoneers out the front. And then, of course, we've got the Ozutsu, which is that unique unit for the Japanese, which uh, has got that AOE damage uh, when, they're, when they're taking out units. So they're kind of like Randy, but uh, well, they're, they're infantry instead. Uh, they also do really good damage against buildings. Uh, and then on top of that, what have we got back here? Uh, it looks like we've just got, I think this is just a monastery. I'm not 100% sure. And uh, if, if, you're, if you've ever played DayZ, we got some guys wearing ghillie suits. <laughs> Why are they wearing ghillie suits? It's, I know they're not ghillie suits. It just looks like they've been out on the on the farms for a little bit too long. What is going on here? I don't I don't think I've ever seen this. I don't remember seeing this in the game. This is wild. Look, it's it's all the is it all the male ones? The, the female ones aren't wearing it. It's just the men that are, that are wearing the uh, the ghillies. Uh, very very cool villages. But I, I see you guys. You're kind of given away by your uh, your red hats there or your red outline on the hats. Uh, and then we also see the Japanese keep over here on the right side. We do know that they have access to a keep landmark in age four. That's the castle of the crow, but obviously they can't be taking it uh, because these landmarks aren't mutually exclusive for the Japanese. So let's take a look at the next screenshot that we've got. And there, once again, we get to see the Ozutsu 
Uh, standing, crouching down, crouching, uh, crouching Ozutsu hidden Shinobi. I guess that's probably the best uh, way, <laughs> way to say it. Uh, and they're standing in front of, I think this is your age two landmark. I'm not 100% sure here. Um, and uh, there's quite a bit going on behind this, but uh, oh, don't mind me. Uh, quite a bit going on behind here. But uh, let's move on to the next screenshot because this one, this one's quite nice. I like this a lot. So I, I'm pretty sure we, this is actually one that we got to see early on. So we're just seeing it again, but this time we know a little bit more about the civilization. So here we can actually see uh, back here. So th this is the, the floating gate. And these here are the... I mean, the devs have said it, so I feel like I'm, I'm not really breaching uh, NDA. And we, we can see it. I can call... I can give it a label. So this is the Yorishira right here, the, these these little things. So you, you can use your, um, your Shinto priests uh, to pick these up. Uh, and then you transfer them over to a building to get that unique bonus. Uh, which building it transfers to? I couldn't say. Uh, just because, well, that, that's uh, that's protected information, but there are some other things to note here. So we've got the keep over here on the left side, but on the back side here, we've got the castle of the crow. You can see this is quite a bit different uh, to the keep. There there are differences in the the uh, in the in the roof, uh, in the way that it looks as well. You can see you've got like this this larger. It kind of looks like a glass see through area, whereas it's not happening over here. So this this is it back there. It just kind of looks like a big keep. Uh, a couple of town centers which have been upgraded. Uh, into the Daimyo Manors. And then we have got here... Uh, this is not a landmark. This is the Wonder, if I remember correctly, for the civilization. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much about it. And nothing else in here. I mean, we've got a couple of golden boys on the front line here. Uh, but uh, I can't I can't say too much about those guys. And well, th there's our monastery there. So that, that definitely was the monastery that we were looking at from b before. Uh, we've got a barracks... We've got the forge over here on the right side. And I think that's it. I think that's all the screenshots that we've got. Let me double check. Indeed it is. That is the last screenshot that we've got. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, the civilization from everything that I've seen is a very aggressive civilization. Like it, it is crazy how aggro this civilization is. And I do suspect this civilization is going to see a lot of play. I think that naturally people are going to want to play this civilization because obviously it's, it's the, the hotness. Um, but one of my fears that I'm gonna, uh, I, I will say right now is the Shinobi. Oh my lord, the Shinobi. <sighs> okay. The reason why the Shinobi is gonna be crazy is because the, the French are really good at low levels because if you get a knight into the enemy base and they don't realize, it will kill all of the villagers. The same thing exists, exists with the Shinobi. And my fear is that you're just going to see a lot of people just going Japanese, just making shinobi, and then just people just resigning because they lost six villages on a gold mine because they weren't, you know, you're in Bronze League. It's like, oh, I was eating dinner. Sorry. I was eating dinner and I lost six villages on my gold mine and now I'm just quitting. And now I'm going to write a Reddit post about how the Japanese are overpowered. That's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, that, that's my suspicion. I, I think the, the unit itself is actually very well balanced. And obviously they've got numbers that they can pull and fiddle with. But I guess my point is like the, the design of the unit is very much uh, towards the lower level. It's going to be a game ending unit very early on. So I look forward to seeing the Reddit posts and the forum posts. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you haven't, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure I, uh, I fix up any mistakes that I've made or any, any feedback that you've got. Other than that, I'll tell you what, I'm absolutely pumped to get this content out, to get access to this expansion pack. I am so damn looking forward to it. I can't wait to get my hands on the Byzantines, dude. Oh my lord, not to mention the, the Order of the Dragon. Oh my god, give me some fire-breathing dragons, baby. It is time. Let's do this. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.